Students, this is the partial explanation video for the practice problems for the second quiz. When it comes to graphing, the simplest way is you can use intercepts or you can get y by itself. This one's it's easy enough just to get y by itself here. So we want to circle the y, and all we have to do is get rid of this 4. So we're going to break up the date. It looks like this so far. You have y equals 9 over 4 x, 16 divided by 4 is 16. Now you just want to change it around so it looks like what you're familiar with. y equals mx plus b, and you graph. Taking a look at the one on the right, again, your goal is just to get y by itself. So we're going to start by adding 6 to both sides, and we end up with 2y equals, we have negative x plus 6, and now you want to get y by itself, and graph according to y equals mx plus b. Okay, for solving for variables, we follow PEMDAS, of course. So we start with distributing, being very careful as you distribute. I also recommend, if you're an auditory learner, to learn to narrate your algebra. For example, listen to what I do. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 7 times 3 is 21. And then that's B. We have minus 8. And then we have 6 times 4. That's 24. And 6 times 2, that's plus 12B plus 7B. Really important that you're in the habit. You collect and clean your rooms before you move the room. So you want to collect like terms first. So we're going to collect our numbers, and you want to collect your variables. Once you do that, you solve for the variable. So that's 42 minus 8. It's going to be 36 plus 21b equals that's going to be 24, and that's 12 plus 19, excuse me, 12 plus 7 is 19b. You can take it from there. For the one on the right, again, you start with the distributive property. And there's nothing to distribute on this side, so the next line reads, Say it out loud, 3 times v is 3v, plus 3 times 3 is 9, plus 8 times 1 is 8, plus 8 times 3 is 24v, equals 9v minus 6, plus 7v minus 10. Very important, you collect before you move. You collect before you cross the equal sign. I think that's a better notation. You collect before you cross the equal sign. So on the left, we're going to collect our numbers. And our variables. On the right, let's collect our numbers. And our variables. So that's 3 plus 24, that's going to be 27v plus 9 plus 8, that's 17, equals 9 plus 7, that's 15, excuse me, 16v, and negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16 and you take it from there.
when you're dealing with radicals, we want to multiply and then simplify. So draw your little distributive lines. Very important, you do not multiply in your head. We're doing negative 5 root 30 times 2 plus negative 5 root 30 times 5 root 6. You multiply outies and you multiply innies where there is one, but there isn't one on the left, but on the right we have this. So our outies here is negative 10 root 30. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25 square root. And we know that if we multiply 30 times 6, that you can pull out dates. So let me show you what you want to do over here. We're going to take this, and we're going to do what's called prime factoring. So we want to break down the 30. The 30 is going to break down to 2 times 15. So 2 times 3 times 5. That's 6 times 5. And then the 6 breaks down to 2 times 3. Now you look for dates and you pull out the dates. And you see here, you can pull out a 2. And we see here, we can pull out a 3. And then we see who's left is at 5. So keep that in mind. So it's going to be negative 10 root 30 minus, that's 25, times 3 times 2 square root of 5. That 3 comes from right here. And that 2 comes from right there. Now you can finish the problem from there. When you go to add, subtract, it's very important you see if you can break stuff down. This 2 here is just 1 and 2. There's no dates. The 6, there's a 2 and a 3, no dates. But the 8, you have a 2 and a 4, a 2 and a 2. So we're going to bring the 2 out like so, and that's going to give us 2 root 2 minus root 6, and then you do 2 times 2, which is 4 square root of 2. You collect like terms, and you're done. Okay, it says finger track and read. You're going to draw a plane, T-U-V-W, intersecting a plane, U-A-B-V. -V. You're going to draw in a line, U-V. Points F, G, and H. Points F, G, and H are both collinear and coplanar on the same line on the same plane. I'm just going to write same line, same plane as T U V W. Line H is non coplanar to both, that should say planes, but intersects line F H. at point G and intersects plane UABV at point J. Draw that very carefully. The one thing I want to point out to you is ask yourself what's repeated in the first and second plane. And you see that U is repeated and V is repeated. That means they hinge at UV. Keep that in mind as you draw this. In the conditional statement, explain the difference between the hypothesis and the conclusion. Direct conditionals are if, then statements, better known as cause, and effect.
So keeping the whole cause and effect in mind here, we have this statement that says the bread will rise when you add yeast to the dough. The bread will rise when you add yeast to the dough. Ask yourself in this case, what is the cause and what is the effect? Once you have that in mind, you're going to put the cause where it belongs, here, and the effect here. Then down here you're going to write it through the paces of converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So this would be the if P then Q. Excuse me, that's the conditional if P then Q. Converse, you switch. That's going to be if Q, then P. Inverse, you say the opposite of the original. So that's going to be if P, if opposite P, then opposite Q. And contrapositive, you switch and negate. So this one is opposite Q, then opposite P. Converse is switch, inverse is negate, contrapositive you switch and negate. Okay, it says a rectangle has a length which is twice as long as the width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 180 meters. Find the area. Let's take this one step at a time. It says a rectangle. So we have a rectangle. And the length is, that's an equal sign, twice as long as the width. So there's our width, and it's going to be twice as long. So we know our length equals twice our width. Length equals twi twice, I don't know why that's so hard to say, the width. And this would just be the width. The perimeter of the rectangle, perimeter, is 180 meters. So you write perimeter equals 180 meters. Don't forget units. You're being asked to find the area. When you don't know what to do, you always do what you can do. So we're going to start by writing out the equation for area, which is what we want, length times width. The problem is we have neither. But we do have perimeter. So let's write out at least the equation for perimeter, which is two lengths plus two widths. Use that as your basis to do circle plug chug and solve for what you can. It says Tasha has a long rectangular garden in her backyard which is 190 square feet. The length of the garden is four times longer than the width. Tasha wants to create a border for her garden using the below lawn edging. The edging comes in 40-foot bundles and costs $19.97 per bundle. Find the amount of edging needed to create a border and calculate the final cost. Now we're going to go through the process of filtering, draw a label list, cross out, and you have to do the rest. So when you filter, you want to look for all numbers with their units. So we have a rectangular garden here, and it's 100. 92 square feet, very important. That's an area concept. Since it is square feet, keep in mind that's an area concept. The length of the garden is four times longer than the width. Tasha wants to create a border. The edging comes in 40 foot bundles and costs $19.97 per bundle. Okay, that's called filtering. Now we're going to do draw label list, cross.
cross out. So everything either belongs on a diagram And if it doesn't belong in a diagram, it belongs in a list. So we go through our highlights and we ask ourselves what belongs in the diagram and what belongs on the list. Well, let's start with something simple. We have a rectangle. So we're going to start by drawing a rectangle. And in that rectangle, its area is already given as 192 feet squared. I'm going to put it here too. Area equals 192 feet squared. And I cross stuff out as I account for it. Now remember, area is like grass. So area is that. Notice I cross stuff out as I count for it. The length of the garden is, that's an equal sign, four times longer than the width. Now notice it says times, not just more than. So it's not an addition, it is multiplication. So length is four times longer than the width. Length is four times longer than the width. And that would just be the width there. Watch this as I cross it out as you account for things. She wants to create a border, so at some point, she wants a border, which is going to go around this way. And the border comes in 40-foot bundles, so I'm just going to write the edging, comes in 40-foot bundles, it means the length of each bundle is going to be 40 feet. And it's going to cost $19.97. Notice I'm crossing find the cost of the edging. So now I can go down. My ultimate question is going to be cost, which of course that's going to come down to a money issue. You want to take it from there, and again, you ask yourself, what can you do, not what should you do? What would be really an easy place to start? And then start Circle Plug Chug.